wanted to share with you how I make a, a simple sign. You can see here in my diagram that I sketched out just some ideas as far as what I thought I might want to do. Hold it closer so you can see. I just kind of drew out a couple of different plans. Decided I liked the third one. Redrew it. And so this is my plan. So the first step I need to do is to take a board and make it completely square. Let me set up for that. All right, the first step is I want to get the board completely square. So I took this board and I set my rip fence here over on my right to the point of exactly where it needed to be to be able to, to get the width of the board. I'm going to turn the board this way. Set it clean to the straight on the edge of the fence and go into the blade to cut my first board. So once the cut is done, as you can see you end up with a board that is perfectly square between the blade over here and the fence over here and this way as well. Now just having a, a, a board with just a square edge on it, like that, didn't look very good to me. So I wanted to put a fancier edge on. Let me show you how that's done. These are roundover bits made for the router. Couldn't decide on if I wanted small, medium, or large. I tried each one. I always use a test piece so you don't mess up your materials. And you can see here, the large is on the right and the smaller is on the left for what a decorative edge might look like. So I've set the router up. Get you in a little closer here. You can see my bit is right there. These bits have a, a roller on the, the top there, but I've learned not to trust that entirely because if you do, you're going to wind up with a wavy line on the edge of it. So when you guide this through, it's going to cut exactly like that with that bit that you can see there. When you're working with a router, you always want to do the end grain first. So you see how the grain goes this way. So I want to do this end first and this end first. So I'd set this down on top of the router. There is a marking on here for what direction is your feed. Feed across. Cut that side, feed across, cut the second side, and then you feed across and do the width of the grain on both sides to get you a nice even setting. And as you can see, you end up with a nice edge that looks like that. I used a computer to draw out my lettering since it looks much better than anything I could write on the board. And you can see I have the edging on the board. I drew a line from this corner all the way up here at the top where my pencil is, down here to this bottom corner, and from here to here. I then took the paper and I marked right here and here and then here these so that I have a perfect line where I can line all of this up and that way I can shift it up and down exactly how I want. Now I'll tape these down and I will use carbon paper, the stuff you used to use with the old typewriters to get duplicate copies while you were typing. All of this, tape it down and then sit here and trace each letter one by one, the paw, and each piece and I have all of those transposed onto here which will leave me blue lines because the carbon paper writes in blue to be able to have my pattern and then transferred onto my board. Once I have it transferred onto the board then I get set up with my router.
the router I'm using for this project is actually my Dremel. I have my Dremel mounted into a plunge router base. I took a sample piece of wood again to figure out my depth. That's a depth stop, so it will not go down any further than that. And you can see the bit there hanging out. So with this, I set it into the letter, holding up on one side. There's a gap under the side, so when you start this, it doesn't go flying off the board and mess up your work. Set the router down, and then very slowly, staying within between the lines of each letter, trace it out. As I said, very slowly. And that'll get the letters. Obviously, you didn't hear the router running, so I've already done this part. This is where I've gotten up to so far on the whole thing. I meant to record while I was doing all of it, but I didn't get all of it written, all of it together in the camera out here first. You can see down here in this bottom section where I've started on the claw, you can see the, the blue lettering, the blue writing, which is from the carbon paper. And what I'll do next <laughs> is I'll take the router and go inside each of these lines and cut out each one of those holes. Yeah, I'm sure you're happy that I remembered to mute that when I made that part of it. But now you can see I have five toes and five claws. The bottom of the letter, the claws are not completely flat because you can see that bit has slight of a point on it, which works great for letters, but I'll need a different bit to flatten these out which I'll change over to after I get the rest of the claw of the paw finished. The reason they call this a plunge router base is because when you set the stop, which is this here, you can go back to the exact same depth every time. So you can plunge this down, get it all the way down, tighten the knob, and now you're ready to cut. What you're going to see is that this roughness is going to go away. See here how this is smooth. This is the part that hasn't been done. I'll finish this up. Then the next thing will be to sand the entire board. Get rid of my pencil lines, any of these extra blue lines. Get the board perfectly smooth and ready for painting. All right, the last couple steps on this project. I'm going to strike a diagonal from one corner to the next. The mark there. I'm going to lay out my hardware. Put marks crosswise where that ought to go. And to keep from splitting anything, I'm going to drill this out. Without going all the way through, of course. I hope we'll be able to put this on here and not end up with a piece of wood that's split. I sure would hate to start over at this point.
gets the hanger mounted. And then I have one last piece on this puzzle. I remember my dad calling this an insignia. I've heard it called something else in more recent years called a maker's mark. A maker's mark is something you might put on whether it's woodworking or blacksmithing or really anything that you wanted to be able to note to the person who sees it later, whether that's someone else or yourself, when, who made it and I always put a year on it to know when it was made. I now draw my maker's mark on the back so that forever anybody looks at the back of this, they will know that I created this in 2022. Hope you enjoyed the video.